Excellent. Great. All right, if people could just um, mute themselves, it would might, might make it a little bit easier for background noise. That'd be great, and, and we'll proceed. Okay. Thank you for attending the Aptus Business Solutions Sage 300 Year End Webinar. A few admin issues to get out of the way. Um, as we've got a large number of attendees, um, I'll get Guillaume to mute all the members so that um, we don't have too much feedback. Um, a recording would definitely be made available at the end of this, so don't worry too much about notes. Um, and the information in this webinar is relevant for any year end date and is not restricted to the 30th of June year ends. So if you're at end of December year end, it's still very much applicable. You should always discuss site specific details with your consultant to ensure that this process is suitable to your year end um, as it might be specific to your company. If you're watching this recording, this information is general in nature. Now that the admin's out of the way, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Stacey Oric and I'm a Sage consultant with Aptus Business Solutions, working with Sage 300, Sage Intact, Sage CRM and Sage X3. I have over 20 years of experience doing year end in Sage 300. Luckily, this only makes me 25. In today's webinar, I'm going to give you all the information you need to confidently plan and action your Sage 300 year end in your respective organisations. I will talk to you about what year end does, the steps you can do leading up to financial year end, and things to consider, including some tips. Access are more than happy to arrange a time either via the phone, remote session, or on site to come and assist you with this process. But we feel it's important to empower our community to have the tools to perform these functions themselves. So let's begin. Stage 300 makes year end processing simple as it's a date sensitive accounting system designed to have multiple years of history and allow posting to multiple years. So let's talk first about what the year end process actually does. The year end function in Sage 300 performs the following. Firstly, it creates and posts a batch of GL transactions to close the income and expense accounts and enter the opening account balances for the new fiscal year. You can see on this slide an example of a journal that's created named closing entries. It's using a source code GLCL and it's creating all those entries through the retained earnings. During this process, it makes sure the opening balances for the new fiscal year and retained earnings accounts are the same as the previous year's closing balances. You can see the example on this slide of that at the end of this year, these closing balances are the same in the closing period. The year end also resets all the income and expense accounts to ensure they have opening balances at zero in the new financial year. Again, in this example, you can see all these income accounts um, reset to zero. Most importantly, it changes the current fiscal year to the new year and allows for posting in the general ledger to proceed, which stops the most common error we get calls about when users try to post journals on the SAGE system that has not undergone a year end yet. And that will be something similar to incorrect procedure cannot post to the future year. Now that we know what year end does, let's talk about some of the important questions you may be asking yourself. When should I perform year end? Over the years, many of my clients have waited until they have finalised all entries prior to running year end. This can sometimes mean that this does not occur for some time. During this time, you cannot post any GL batches into the system and you lose your ability to report from your general ledger. There is absolutely no reason for this delay and we encourage you to perform year end as soon as possible. There is no reason you cannot do it first thing Wednesday morning, 1st of July, 2020. The only implication of doing your year end before all entries are complete is that every entry dated pre 1st of July 2020 will create extra entries when posting and it can slightly slow down posting, but this is only a minor disadvantage. What happens if I need to put an entry back into a prior fiscal year? Well, once a fiscal year or 
period is closed, entries can still be posted back into prior periods of years, assuming you've got rights to do it. Stage 300 then continues to close off each entry to the closing account and create additional posting journals to the user. This is seamless. So this is a really good example of a journal that um, had an entry go back and be posted to it. And you can see at the bottom, and you'll see this on your posting journals, that a closing entry was created because this entry was triggered to a prior financial year. Okay, so that's all that happens each time you go back and post something. Can I post my year end adjustments to a separate period? I often get asked. So, um, Sage 300 functionality supports a number of periods that users may not be familiar with. Um, not any of my sites that I recall are using a 13 period calendar year, which is for a four week calendar. Um, but that's certainly available and that's when a 13th fiscal period would, would become available. Fiscal period 14 is the adjustment period and you can use that for um, any adjustment entries at the end of the year. I'll talk about that in a moment. And fiscal period 15 is what the system uses to post all the closing entries to. So users can't access that. It's a system um, generated fiscal period. So the benefits of using fiscal period 14 um, are that some clients prefer to be able to separately flag their adjustment entries so that they can prepare unaudited and audited reports. It also allows you to keep your final operating period free from large year end accounting adjustments and it preserves the year over year comparability for that period. Using a 14th period also allows you to lock a previous year's regular periods to avoid accidental entries while still allowing you to make adjustments to a previous year while working on it. Okay, so please note that adjustment period, you can only impact from the general ledger. You can't go to accounts payable or accounts receivable and see that period and try and post to it there. Just a general ledger function. Um, the period 15 transactions are not always available for users to see them. Um, you need to have a special financial report or a SAGE intelligence report to access the special fields. So if you need any help with that, um, then let us know. After you've considered these kinds of questions, there are a number of things that you can start to do in the lead up to year end. And this is why we run the webinar now so that you can start to consider some of these. First one is that you can start to think about the actual year end date. Um, can't change it from the physical 30th of June um, 2020, but what you can do is discuss with your team when you will be performing your organisation's year end. And what this means is that you'll be able to establish some times for cutting off the entry of transactions. Um, for example, any accounts payable invoices that come in after the 7th, they might need to be entered into the new financial year. So it's always good to clearly communicate that to everyone involved. Um, it's also a good time to talk about um, how users should be batching um, entries that cross fiscal periods into separate batches. Um, so for example, you're entering some AP invoices, some of them are going to go into the current um, and then some are going to go into the new. If you keep them separate, you won't get a shock with that error batch that gets created in the general ledger. Okay. Um, you can certainly go off and um, even after this webinar, um, you won't, you, you need to create a new fiscal calendar. So on the first day of a new year, you may not be ready to close your general ledger, but you'll certainly want to keep processing in um, your sub modules. So for example, if you want to continue raising sales invoices in accounts receivable or either order entry, to do this, you have to make sure that the new financial year has been created in your fiscal calendar so that SAGE 300 is aware of the new fiscal periods in the new fiscal year. Um, and that's quite simple to do. Um, you just need to have access in um, fiscal calendar and common services. I'm just actually going to go into my SAGE and show you where that is now, because this is something a lot of users will go and do straight after the webinar. So under common services, if you go to fiscal calendar, you'll come into it. It will, the screen will load and it will load with the last available um, 
year that's there. If you're sitting here waiting to go into and um, create a new financial year, you just click the new button and then you'll hit add. Um, now, importantly, whilst you're in there, if you do open up the new year today, I would recommend locking these fiscal periods um, and making sure that anything's locked in the other one because this is the most common time that I see you will incorrectly post um, to the wrong fiscal, fiscal period. Um, so the next thing um, to do is to check the number of years of history. So these are kind of administrative things and you can do these at any time. Um, our clients run various versions of SAGE and there are some limitations on the number of years of history you can have. Um, it's only the top tier product of the premium edition that allows for 99 years of history. Um, but again, don't assume that your system's been set to its maximum. You need to go into the system and we do this via General Ledger. You can go to GL Setup, Options, and you can check on this posting tab, the number of years of fiscal set that your system can retain. Okay, the reason it's important to check that is if that you're going to roll this year um, and you can't increase that, say for example at seven, when you run the year end, you will automatically start to clear history in your database. And this is not retrievable. If you haven't done a backup, um, this will have an impact on your system. So you need to talk to us or um, consult about having a data set archived off so that you don't lose any of your history. Important to check that. The next thing that's important to check, and a lot of systems that have been running for a long time, this won't necessarily need to be checked, but um, we always go and check the retained earnings account. And this is the account to which all the new year um, closes all the income and expense accounts to. Um, and it, it's worth just checking that it is the right account. So you can do that again in that same area under GL Setup and Options, and it's under Account. And it's specifically that one in my sample data. Now, if you have a multi-segmented account number, um, you can close income and expense accounts by that segment um, and assign a separate retained earnings account. I have seen in the past companies that are running multiple companies within the one Sage 300 database, close everything to one retained earnings account and then go and have to manually prepare the retained earnings entry. The system can, based on that segment, close off to different retained earnings accounts. So if that's something that's applicable to you, you should contact your consultant to um, discuss how you can do this better. The other thing to check is check your chart of accounts. Now, the most common problem clients call us about is that after year end has been done, some of the P&L accounts that should have been cleared still have balance. And this is because if the account type is flagged incorrectly during the year end process, it doesn't know which account to roll and it can't clear it. So the problem with that is that once you've redone the year end, it can't be rerun again. So you can't go and fix the account up and then rerun it. The only way to correct it is to restore a backup or to journal the balances out of the account. Okay. So I always tell clients to go into their system, go to their general ledger, GL account, into their account. Now, some of you with smaller charts might be able to just hit the finder key and maximise this and have a bit of a scroll through. And most companies will know if one of their accounts is incorrect first because your reports would have probably um, shown it, you would have had a reporting issue. Um, so I always like to look through here and make sure that there's not an I sitting in the middle of all my Bs um, and just check that. Your other option is that you can, if you've got a large chart, go to File, go to Export and export it out to um, Excel. Okay, and then have a look at it in Excel. But if you've done this previously, it's just something I always have on my year-end checklist. Okay, the other thing that a lot of users um, don't think about is that uh, to turn off automatic posting around this time of year. Um, and they, what happens is each module, um, over time, Sage 300 introduced the ability to automatically post your sub-ledger modules. Um, so when you post something in AP, automatically post in GL. 
And at this time, if you haven't run your end and you keep posting all your AP and your AR, you're going to start to get thrown a lot of error batches um, saying that your calendar year hasn't been created. There's absolutely no problem with it. And once you do year end, you can go back and post them, but it does freak a lot of users out and it, it, it makes them, it makes it sort of look a bit messy in the general ledger. So to minimise those errors, I always sort of say to clients, it might be a good idea to turn that auto posting off at this time. Um, now each module has its own setting for that. So under accounts payable, for example, AP setup, there's a GL integration um, area. And this is down the bottom here, this is how the system's been told to handle the auto posting into the GL. Whether it's creating a new batch, adding it to an existing or creating and posting a new batch. So at this time, I would normally have it set to creating a new batch. Now this is a setting that you can only save and change when all users are out of the system. So you might need to do this either early morning or late at night, um, but it's definitely worth sort of doing. This is also just another area that users don't use very often. And under this transactions is driving the fields that transfer through to the general ledger. So I'm just gonna leave that there and you can talk to us further about that. But if you're running GL transaction listings and you're not getting the reports in your report, sorry, the data in your report that you want, then it's this area that needs to have some specific changes made. Okay. Um, consider auto reversing journals too at this time. It's just something to sort of alert users about is that if you've got some, if each month you've got a journal and it's set to auto reverse in the next, you know, in period one of the fiscal year 2021, those batches are going to create errors if someone tries to post them. So don't be alarmed when you see the error batches, it's normal and auto reversing journals are just going to do that to you and roll the year. Mm -hmm. Okay, next thing I want to do is talk about um, backups and involving your IT team. Many clients I talk to don't know about their backup routines. They've never even tested them. Um, they don't know what's involved in asking IT how to retrieve it and restore it. Um, and they don't even know if they had to ask IT how quickly it could be restored. So I always tell users that they really need to get sort of involved in this and know what their options are. Um, and I also sort of say it's a good time to sort of request with IT um, that when you're about to do year end, that you want to request a backup of financial year end and that you want to put it somewhere safe. Someone down the track might want, might want it, um, but if you've got a sort of normal backup schedule happening, it could be that every three days your backup gets clobbered, gets rewritten over the top. So you need to speak to your IT about um, the frequency and how to actually request having a backup put aside for a longer period of time. Okay. Um, a whole another webinar is on the integrity of your data. I'm not sure how many of you might be running the integrity check, um, but I'll be sending out some more information after the webinar on that. Users can also do their own backups. If you wanna just do one, if your IT has said, no, we've only got nightly ones scheduled. Um, I, we've also got some notes on how users can do their own database backups with the Sage database dump feature. So, but at any time, if you need any help with those things, it's definitely worth calling us. We have had a few situations in the past um, few months where some clients have been left a little bit short with some backups. Um, so I would definitely put it high on your radar to look into. Okay, it's also the time of year that we talk about considering clearing history. Now, Gone are the days where we used to have to spend hours and days clearing all the posting journals and clearing everything. If you don't have a data or any speed issues, then I tend to lean on the side of, let's just keep as much as we can. But if you're starting to notice that your system has space for speed issues, then it's something that we need to consider. It's not something that you just consider quickly though. Um, it needs to be planned. And we would definitely want to archive off your company so that we could have another company on your start list with the um, data in it prior to it being cleared, in case anybody wants to go back to it. Um, and sometimes clearing history can take a long time. If you're trying to clear a lot of open, uh, closed sort of purchase orders or orders, it could take hours for that to run. So if you're thinking about doing this, I, I like to think of it as a separate task from your end, okay? Think about that as well. 
Also find that now is a good time to review your month end procedures. Have you got some? Are you um, performing month end tasks? Or do you sort of do them all at the end of the year? Different clients do different things, but by having great month end processes, year end can really be streamlined. If you don't do reconciliations regularly, then reconciling once a year can be really difficult. Okay, so Sage 300 doesn't require you to do these reconciliations before you can do the year end, but um, it's definitely worth looking into. Now, if you need some help with that, I know um, Chris done some work on a Sage Intelligence report with some balances and things on it, but the reports are generally run, uh, you know, your age trial balance and compare it to your debtors controlled account. Your age payables report, compare it to your creditors control account. That you've got a bank rec that you've compared and balanced to your GL bank account. Um, are you clearing and um, printing out your tax tracking reports? Do you even know about the new Australian tax reporting module that's been released in the later versions of Sage 300? Um, the IC valuation report, comparing that to your stock on hand at the end of month. And finally, and not like, you know, this is not a complete list. How is your depreciation out of your asset system balancing to your GL um, account? So if you want to talk to us more about those um, month end processes, happy to do that. Okay, so the last steps before running your end, um, and these are uh, just some sort of tips, I guess, more than anything, is that some clients like to run all their reports. They might print a trial balance, they might print a PL, and l and they might print a, um, you know, some balance sheets before they run your end. It's not, I've never seen your end sort of corrupt database, but this is more that people like to run them so that they keep them at a point in time. Because people can open up fiscal periods and put information back, um, it's that they, these are the reports at this point in time. So, um, and a tip for that is run them to PDF, but also run them to Excel because um, at some point someone might want to pull that up in Excel and, and manipulate it or consolidate it or do something with it. On the day of your um, year end, uh, year end, make sure that you've run day end just to make sure that you've got all your um, entries in there. Um, worst case scenario, if you hadn't, it's just going to create posting and um, journal closing um, afterwards. Try and post all your batches. It's just nice and neat to see, make sure as much as possible is posted, but it's not entirely imperative. Okay. Some other modules do have year end functions. Norming, for instance, has a year end, um, and uh, Cashbook used to, but it doesn't have any more. You might be using some other third party product. So if you're not sure if there's something else that you need to be doing, then feel free to give us a call. But um, norming, Fixed assets is definitely one that has a year end function. Okay. Um, this was another thing that I wanted to just highlight to people. Not everyone does this, but a few clients do. And that this, um, whilst I talked about clearing history, these statistics are time sensitive. So if you are using, and I've got an example here of this AP vendor um, activity page and see how it's recording statistics of total days to pay, total invoices paid, this kind of information. You can imagine that if you proceeded three months down the track then realised you wanted to reset these for the year 2021, it's time sensitive, okay? So if you've finished for the year and you're about to start processing lots of stuff for the 21 year, you really need to clear those activity stats, okay? But I just wanted to highlight that one and put that one out there one, you may not know that they're even there, or, and two, that you need to consider these at your end time. Okay. Um, okay, so what I just wanted to do now was show you how easy the actual year end bit is inside of Sage 300. Okay, and then we're gonna finish up with a, a few other things and then a question time, okay? So when I come out to clients and we've done all those checks that we've talked about, we've checked our numbers of years of history, we've created the new fiscal year, we've checked our retained earnings account and we've checked all my GL account. It's quite a simple process to actually perform your end. All you're gonna go and do is go to general ledger, um, you're gonna to go to periodic processing and there's a create new year button, okay? So always read this message. This is that, you know how we were talking about the number of years of history that can be retained? 
this is the one that's going to give you the big heads up on that. My database here is going to create new records um, for processing into 2021, but it's going to remove fiscal sets older than 1922. Now, I wasn't entering data back then, but some of you, if they're set to seven, it might have, um, this might be actually about to clear history for you. So this is that one that I've said, stop, do not press that button. You, you will need to contact us about archiving the data. Okay. Now, when you um, get to this screen, you've read your warning and you're happy to, you can hit process. Now, this is a really good message to appear. And that is that you cannot do year end while there's other users in the system. Okay, and this also ties in with the fact that you've probably backed up your system. Um, you don't want anyone in there um, right now. Okay, so you've got to make sure that, I must have another window open here. Um, just on that, you can, um, if I go up to about, go to licenses, I can go to current users and I can click on show screen. So I can see that I've still got my fiscal calendar. So you'd be able to see that in your organisations to see who else was accessing what screen. Okay. Yep, and I didn't even close this, did I? Okay. So I'm just going to click on the Create New Year button and click Process. Now what this does is whiz through all those accounts and closes them off. So what you've got to imagine is that um, this could take some time, okay? So if you've got a very large GL chart of accounts, um, this could take some time. Mine has processed. This now said that it, the current year is 2021 and it's created a posting journal. Okay, so I'd be able to go to my general ledger, have a look at my batch list. I can see that a batch has been created and I've got a lot of closing entries in here. Um, so that's as simple as the actual year end process is. Um, so it's quite quick um, on this data set um, and that's all that needed to occur. Now going to that, there's just a few things after your end to make sure that you do. If you've waited some time, you might have um, a heap of error batches still there. So once you've done your end, go and post all those error batches um, so that you can start to get your real time reports back out again. Um, the other thing that I always do as well, and I'm not sure that many users know about this one, is I go and print a source journal report. Now, I think this is one of the most underutilised features in Sage 300 that I've seen over the years. Um, and I'll quickly just show you what that means. Under GL Setup, there's these source codes um, here and source journal profiles. Now, every sub-module throughout the system when it posts, it has the source code. So you'll be used to seeing things like APIN in the general ledger journals. So a source code is a tag on a transaction, okay? The source journal profiles um, are ways of saying, um, and in this instance, I've created one, I've called it OB. I've told the system that I want you to go and grab anything in the system that had a GLCL attached to it. So that's naturally going to be any entry that was created by my closing entries. Okay. Now, by having a source journal profile, that means that I can go to GL reports and I can go to source journals and I can run my opening balance report. Okay. So I can tell it to look all through the system and I can tell it for this fiscal period or last one to grab everything out of the system that has got GLCL attached to it. So it's a really good way of narrowing down and just if the auditors want to know, hey, what were all the closing entries? Um, now you could say, oh, but that was that batch Stacey just did. She just did one. That's I could just print that batch out. Remember, if someone goes back and puts something in, it'll create the closing entries again on the end of each posting journal. So there could be more than one posting journal that's got closing entries in it. So that's why this is quite valuable. The other reason I say that it's underutilised is that Given your general ledger is period driven, not many reports out of the GL can actually be run by date. Okay, so for, I see a lot of clients will use this um, source journal area for other reasons. They might just want to see all the invoices for a certain date range. Okay, so if you need any more help with that, um, the source journal reports, then uh, let me know. But that's definitely a report that you can keep to file, run it to Excel, those kind of things. 
Okay, the other thing, and this is definitely not compulsory, just like at the start of it, someone likes to print all their reports, they might like to do it at the end of the process. Some audit might say, we want proof of what the report was before and we want it after. So it's definitely, and these are just some of the reports that might be worth um, putting into the script try to run after a, a year. Um, the next thing I just wanted to mention was that in, depending on what version of SAGE you're on, should I just go back to the slide, sorry. There are resources within your SAGE 300 system, okay? So in the current versions of SAGE 300, so I believe this is at least 2019 and 2020, I'm not sure about 2018, if you go into your SAGE, um, if I go up to help and product, um, help and product documents, you can see that this is going off to the online help and it's actually going to show me some quickly. Um, it's going to show me some of the online help available. I could click on, say, for example, um, you know, SAGE 2020, there's some checklists here and there's some year-end procedure checklists. Okay, so don't forget that there would be resources within your system that you can utilise. Okay. Um, also, the other thing that a lot of users don't know about um, is that SAGE has created a year-end centre and it's got valuable resources there to help you through your year-end. Some of this sometimes can be a bit complex or it might not necessarily translate to Australia. You might see some things like 1099 um, reporting, um, they're specific to the US. Um, but it's definitely worth going, and I'll put the link here, um, and you can go and have a look what's in the Sage 300 Year End Centre. Okay, now having said that, some of you may not have access to Sage City. If you don't have access to Sage City, let us know, we can help you get it. It's part of your support plus that you pay yearly. Um, and you get forums and blogs and information there. But you can see here that there's a whole centre here for um, uh, year-end activities and things like that. Bearing in mind, again, it's quite US-driven. However, it's still there and available. Um, okay, we're nearly there. Um, just while I had you all, I wanted to sort of quickly mention that this is a good time of year to be using the feature of provisional posting. Um, and if you don't know about that, a lot of sites, if you don't see the buttons on this screen called provisional post, it means that in your GL setup options, someone has not flagged um, allow provisional posting. Okay, so if you turn that on, what a provisional post button means is that I can create a journal and you might be doing something for year end and you're just not quite sure what it does you can provisionally post it. It doesn't submit it fully through the database. And once you've got a provisionally posted entry, you can go to report trial balance and you can run what they call a provisional included trial balance. So it's like a what if, if I did this, what would the impact be on my trial balance? And it's just a good way to check things at this time of year. So again, if you need some help with that, let us know. Okay, oops. Um, I've touched on it before, but don't underestimate the time needed. I have seen some sites take two hours to run through that GL year end just because of the sheer number of GL accounts, okay? So don't think that you might just roll in one morning, five minutes to nine, you're gonna run it before the mass amount of users need to get in the system. You might need to really plan that timing required to, to do this process. Morning, I think is a great time because you do have that backup that you could go back to, you would, it would be reasonably safe to assume that your IT has backed up that night. But like I said, please double check before you do any of this. I can't stress highly enough about backup. Um, so make sure that you've got that backup before you proceed. Um, the last one there is that I wanted to sort of also bring up at this point in time that things like a year end process where you may not be running them very often, you may not have um, adopted these visual process flows in SAGE 300. Um, it, what it's a way of visually sort of representing information easily together. And all those things I talked about today, I've sort of just popped onto a visual process flow and it means I can open my new year there. It's gonna to go to the fiscal calendar and open it. I can go and check my years of history. 
So it'd be really worth, you know, even during this year end, building one so that you've got one just for next year that you can um, click through. Okay, but these are just designed to be shortcuts to, if I click on that button, it's going to take me to my GL options. If I click on this button, it's going to take me to the year end function in fixed assets. So we've really just created a nice little shortcut of information there. Okay. Um, okay. The last thing I sort of wanted to mention was just a tip about if you do end up with a incorrect GL account. So for example, if you do end up with an account with a flagged balance sheet and it should have been a PL one, there are some steps that you can undertake to um, resolve it. Um, and this, you know, I'll send this out, it'll also be in some notes that I'm sending. But you've just got to make sure that you've got your allow posting to previous years selected. And that's also in that you just go to these options. This tick will only allow us to go back to um, posting to previous years. Um, you could go and create a new GL account. You can then um, do a journal to transfer the balance to that new GL account. Um, and then mark the old account inactive. So by moving it, doing the journal and moving it to a new account that's been flagged income will be enough to trigger that closing entry to close off that account. Some clients have then said, oh, but then I end up with an account that number that I don't want. Just tie that in with the GL account code change feature and rename that account or merge it afterwards. Okay, but that this would be the step I would use to correct an incorrect GL account. The last thing I wanted to mention is we've had a couple of clients this year ask us about changing their fiscal years to another um, fiscal year. Um, and it's not a standard feature within Stage 300 to be able to do it. There is a utility provided by a company called Music that if you did need to move from a 1st of July to 30 June fiscal year to a 1st of January to December or something like that, there are utilities around to do it. You do not have to start new blank companies and um, so I guess I've gone through everything that I wanted to go through and I guess I'd like to open it up now and, and give you the opportunity to ask any questions and um, yeah, I think you might be able to unmute. Is there anybody that's got any questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, it's uh, Samari Elenek talking from Neptune Energy. Um, mm -hmm. I just joined a couple of minutes late, so I'm not sure if you've already covered this, but I just wanted to know, will you be emailing out this presentation for reference purposes? Oh, yes, I will be sending a recording and I've also got a Word document where I've put all the steps into it as well. So you may not necessarily have to rewatch the video if you don't want. Okay, great, lovely, thank you. All right. Hi, Stacey. Hello. It's Mary from Centec. Hello, Mary. Um, so in the GL setup options, the number of years of history, I've just had a look when you were doing it and we've only got five years mm -hmm. in there and it seems a little bit light on, mm -hmm. but um, can I just change that maybe to seven and that, that won't be an issue, just change five to seven and then, yes. yeah, so you, uh, that's yeah. all I need to do? Yes, so the two lower versions of Sage, um, they change the names all the time, can hold seven and it's only the premier product that can hold 99. So yes, you need 